did exactly what she said. And you see, see, sometimes we can miss our opportunity because we're not prepared to act. Oh, my. You see, many times the favor of God is released when preparation meets opportunity. I didn't say it, some rich right there, and some of y'all just are going to. That's, that's cool. See, many of us, we miss our opportunity because we're not, we have not prepared to act or to move. And many times, that's when the favor of God is released, when preparation meets that opportunity. Let it sink in. You see, you can't walk by faith if you're not prepared to move. Folks, faith acts. Amen. And many of us, we, 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 we've missed opportunity because there was no preparation. Oh, my. Opportunity can show up because you made no preparation. Then, therefore, the favor of God can't be released. Oh, my. <laughs> when opportunity shows up for houses and land. And I'm not saying necessarily you made preparation to save tons of money, but I prepared sow and see. And then when opportunity shows up, harvest comes in. So you can't walk by faith if you're not prepared to move. We're still in, uh, go back to James 2.18, and I'm going to wrap this up. I have to finish the rest in the next service. Oh, thank you, Jesus. James 2.18. It say, yeah, a man may say thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. You see, this is why I say faith will always demand a believable act out of you. It demands a believable act. Show me my, you, you saying you in faith? Well, show me your works. If there are no works, there is no faith. Oh, Jesus. So now, uh, let me see. Maybe, maybe, can I, I don't know if I need to give you one more. I'll give you one more and I'm done. How much time I got? Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to give you one more and I'm done. done. And I'll finish them up in the next service. Faith stands. Now, this is very important. Now, after you've seen it, Spoke it and acted on it, you've got to stand. And I don't have the time to go to it. I'll pick it up in the next service. Amen. Faith is like that invisible line that reaches over into the invisible realm. And it hooks up to the things that you desire. Oh, my. Hooks up to the things you demand. And it brings it forth out of the unseen into the seen world. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Faith is like the transportation system. It transports your goods from heaven to earth. 
Now, some of you are saying, Reverend, that sounds good, but what does that mean? Well, faith is your spiritual connected to the things of God. Any and everything that we have in God, it comes by way of faith. In other words, it takes faith to get your stuff. Oh, thank God. Look at somebody saying, I want my stuff too. Faith ushers in victory over any and every area in your life. It's impossible for faith to be defeated. Faith cannot be defeated because it comes out of God. Thank you, Lord. Now, quickly go to Romans 12 and 3. Thank you, Jesus. I promise I'm going to finish this portion up in this service. I promise. Y'all just let me stay on course and on track. And I can. Romans 12 and 3 says, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man, and we send every man, every born-again believer, the measure of faith. You see, we've been teaching that God has deposited a portion of his faith into every born-again believer. You see, we have a determined extent of God's faith. Amen. You have a portion of the faith of God. Look at somebody say, the faith of God is in me. But now, because we have that measure, we have a responsibility to get developed and to grow in our faith. You see, we've been given a starting point, but it's not the will of God that we stay at that starting point. But God wants our faith to be developed, and he wants it to grow. In other words, he don't want us to stay at the same level of faith. That's why scripture tells us that we are to go from faith to faith. In other words, your faith should be stronger tomorrow than it is today. Amen. Look at somebody say, God wants you to grow your faith. You see, faith must grow. See, it's imperative that we understand that your faith must grow. Because faith that doesn't grow will eventually turn into unbelief. See, that, that's one of the reasons, one of the things that happens to a lot of Christians. We fall in unbelief because our faith is not growing. Oh, my. Yeah. Go to Romans 10, 17. Very familiar. Now, that's something I kind of hit on a little bit in the, uh, uh, the 8 o'clock service, and I want to kind of say it again. I think it's very important. Now, Romans 10, 17, this is how faith grows. So then faith cometh by hearing. Now those of us, we know hearing is a present tense. It doesn't say faith comes by what we heard. But it comes by hearing. And that hearing comes by the word of God. Now, if you look up at verse 13 and 14, and this is something very key. Sometimes we, we, we miss this. You see, there's a process to hearing. Now, we always stress the fact of Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But there is a process to hear. Come on now, say it fast. Hearing does not automatically happen. Yes. Come on now. Let me prove my point. Look, look at verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then verse 14 says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? In other words, he's saying you can't call on him and you don't believe. Then it says, and how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? You can't believe if you haven't heard anything. And then it says, and how shall they hear without a preacher? Now, you see, this all connects or ties into faith. You see, before you call on God, you must believe. And in order to believe, you must first hear. 